What's up everybody? Today's video is gonna be a little bit different. What I wanna do is basically talk about canister filtration. Anyway, everyone's familiar with those options and that's a great option nowadays. Uh, you know, the technology has caught up with some of the hobby and to have the canister filter and employ one or two is a great option versus some pump or any sort of equipment filtration, sponge filters that you have to employ otherwise to keep your water clean. Anyway, uh, really quick, I'm gonna show you how I do it. Um, sure, many of you are familiar with it, like I said, but I put a little spin on it, and also some couple of, you know, uh, what you would call it, DIY tricks and budgetary tips. Let's call it that. <laughs> All right, so let's get to it. Okay, so here we are. As you can see, I'm working with the Sun Sun. 704B, the UV light and all that stuff. I even upgraded these UV bulbs that it comes with to the 12 watt instead of 9 watt. It is. See, it comes with a 9 watt UV light that's supposed to kill the algae. And it does a pretty good job if you run it at night, not just 24 7. But I'll explain that later. Anyway, so this is it. It comes with some of the. Uh, uh, media already in here, ceramic, not even balls, but like some sort of, uh, you know, ceramic media and one, what it seems like, carbon, uh, activated carbon pad, and each one, and even a coarse one. So this will be the very bottom. So most of this you'll actually keep for now. Because, like I said, so these come for about $96 uh, with the media on eBay. That's where I found it. And, uh, yeah, plug and play. Obviously, I upgrade mine. <laughs> I call it an upgrade, but I certainly uh, changed this up a little bit to my liking. And sure enough, I went with the uh, lava rock as well. And, like I said, I upgraded this 9-volt light to a 12-volt. Why not? Anywho, um, another helpful tip, I'll show you in a minute why I chose to go again with the 704B instead of anything else. The output is pretty good, 525 gallons per hour. Uh, it does its job, and the price you can't beat in comparison to some of the other better sort of whatever, uh, you know, canister filters out there, which, you know, can range from anywhere from two to 400 bucks. So 96 bucks, and it does a pretty good job even on a messy piranha tank. So let's get to it. Okay, so here we go. So there's a few things that I do different with these, with this setup. As out of magic as it may be, it also isn't the optimal. Like I said, you can settle for it and use it right away out of the box, but you can also Take your time and make it better in just a few minutes. So here's a light bulb. I really don't need it yet because that one is already in there. All plugged in. Next step is basically these things. It's the ceramic things. I mean, it's just a just a bag like this. So it's going to occupy like you know some part of it. I don't really use these, and I'm not going to this time either. I don't know why. I just you know I don't trust it as much. I might keep these little balls just for fun because they create some space and whatever and they do have some, you know, surface for bacteria to attach and whatnot. But in addition to that, I use lava rock. Now, this is barbecue style lava rock. There's big and small pieces in there. If you feel like smashing stuff, go ahead, you know, hammer and smash stuff up and definitely rinse it out and then fill the trays and I'll show you basically how I do it as far as which you know goes in first which goes last and why all right there's still a little bit of moisture like I say they test them before they send them out to you make sure they don't leak however there's a tip that I'll give you also that I found useful each and every time during assembly a new one once you get it going it's all good but the first time around this son of a gun may leak on you and that each one leaked on me. Easy quick fix, but I'll definitely show you why and how. Okay. Uh, right, last tray. So I'll probably use this carbon. I've 
bad. I'm just gonna add one more bag that I have. Simply, I use quite a bit of carbon on the top because, uh, you know, like I said, the amount of fish I have and the amount of uh, whatever, waste they produce and everything else, the carbon comes very useful. All right, so the next step, uh, also polyfill, very useful, very helpful. I was lucky enough when I purchased the other tank, this guy gave me a ton of this sponge he's got, which is also basically a pretty decent uh, sp sponge that you can cut these pads yourself if you choose to, and I do. I do create a super thick layer that goes at the very, very top uh, and with carbon basically and that's my final you know stage there's five of these final stage of filtration the very first stage once again I believe that's in here yep the very first stage is here which is this blue sponge course it's very good it just traps the big stuff first you know any like little branch particles and such which doesn't necessarily ruin the you know the uh, that's what you might call the, the pad. These pads will become crap after just a few days, but they're already here, so you can give them a run. I just add a few more or stack in there with some, you know, extra of this stuff just to make sure that it holds <laughs> everything instead of letting things through right here and here, which then end up back in your tank. But not super relevant just yet my new tank that's going to get these filters in has no fish in it yet and there's a trick that i'm going to basically uh, use and i highly recommend in cycling your tank and once again that just goes into more or less the diy you know on the budget uh modularity sort of thinking so uh, here it is let's get this going like I said, I'm just gonna add some more stuff here and move these pads around a little bit. So um, I'll show you how this, this goes. First, I gotta wash the hot rod. All right, so I got the lava rock all washed up. <laughs> yeah, I kept all the big pieces too. You know, to fill all these trays, one bag is probably gonna be close to billing enough. So here's what I do. Once again, we're going back to the very first tray, which is this one. I'm keeping this blue pet downer that should stay. Uh, keeping this as well, you know, to trap some of the next whatever phase particles and whatnot. And thinking about adding just one more or making my own out of polyfill. Uh, once again, already here, use it up. In a month or two, you can change it, upgrade, you know, do whatever to make it better. Okay, so this is the first one. It'll go in like that. It's not overly packed or anything like that. I can drop it in there. Just want to make sure I'm putting it in the right place. Okay, next one, some bio balls and stuff. You can keep that pad in there. You know, I actually kind of recommend keeping that first pad in there. And now you can add some of these balls. You know, I use some of these big ones or some medium ones actually. The big ones are gonna go to the next tray when I'll explain why. And here, that's just adding, you know, obviously a layer already. All right, like I said, try not to overdo it and I'm probably overdoing it already. This will push down and it'll be fine. Okay, so this will be next level drop down there the following one uh it's got some big ones no pad i'm just going straight directly from here to here's as of one double level of lava rock uh serving the biological media purpose because it's a pretty big canister and i can employ a lot of these pads but having this bio, you know, creating a real um, natural and functioning ecosystem, it's not just about having clean water, it's about having the right kind of live water. Uh, more on that. So let's fill this guy in. Let's 
that's it. No, you have to go there. It's not good enough. Another set. Getting to in a place. So some... All right, so that leaves us with one and final tray. Then the lid. This is where the carbon comes in. This is where I add one of these, and that's what I'm going to show you how I just quickly cut out whatever, or you can stuff the polyfill in there as well. I'm going to take a break because my back is ripping. Okay, I decided not to rinse it, but it'll rinse itself, so to speak. Anywho, all right, so here's the first one, the first pad, which is, again, what they supply you with. And I'll take this and simply cut off a piece that I know I'll need, more or less, based on the size of that filter. I mean, it's kind of weird working like this, but whatever. We'll get it done. All right, I've got a piece of this sponge. And then what I'll do is I'll take this pad out, place the juice like such. And then uh, cut out the, more or less that shape, but leave myself a little extra. I want that extra to become, you know, that snug, tidy feel that I'm looking for inside the canister. So no, no need to be really. <laughs> Precise. This little hole, obviously you're going to need it, otherwise you're going to fight real tight. But what I do is, again, just make a snip right through the middle like that and tear a little bit. And believe me, this will now become even a tighter, snugger, whatever fit around this. Don't need to cut these out. This will just basically kind of give in, you know, to these little posts. And you have yourself a pad, extra pad. I'll just do it this way so this comes out nice and even. Let's see how it works. and now it's way tighter as well since I made it you know slightly larger let's just stuff it in against all the walls posts everything else kind of flatten it out especially around, around this inlet let's stuff that in there too and then the white stuff which is already cut out makes it kind of even better or at least keeps it in place now it gives you a little bit of room, that's what you're gonna need, some space, because now you're gonna place these bags. This one I bought later, aftermarket, much bigger and better. So that's what you want, you kind of fill that in just like that, it covers most of the area. And then now this cheapo that came with it, but still it'll function just fine. You wanna spread that carbon out a little bit, you know and uh, voila, Donskis, this is the top level. Now with that, you're really getting some, you know, filtration. Okay, let's just make sure this fits all nice and snug. Seems to be. Then a top tray, before you close it up. But before you close it up, as I was saying earlier, these things are pretty good, but I guess, you know, when they're brand new, they're just kind of whatever. Put together, you know, to go, and when they test them in water, they test them probably for just a few minutes or something, but my leaked overnight to a point, you know, drip, drip, to a point where I found a puddle in the middle of my floor coming from underneath the cabinet. So each time with each setup new setup this was a issue this was the issue uh, what happened was basically when you put the uh, put this on and you tighten up the clamps the seal gasket right here doesn't get enough you know seal I guess on it until you loosen up these screws right here there's four screws right there one two and another side two three and four and basically these are the two of the, uh, you know, brackets, clamps, whatever, that hold this canister down 
ultimately what you do is you want to turn them half a turn or maybe a, you know less than a full turn but half a turn or so giving this you know uh, allowing this to walk away from this from this base top whatever that is from this hat ultimately so and then when you clamp this on it becomes airtight seal no more leaks so this is how it'll go in and then you set this guy down one two sorry I'm probably blocking it but there it is you can feel that you have to push down on it when you clamp and that's the whole thing you know maybe it's not an FX you know whatever six for 350 400 bucks but for 96 bucks this thing will work you just got to make a little adjustments and again it's not rocket science I mean to loosen up four screws to keep it functioning so that's that basically this guy's already set up uh, what I'm going to do now is you know fill it with water and etc etc and hook it up but here's what I wanted to show you uh, here's the other components that I also will have to attach to the outlet of the canister on each one of those canisters I'll have uh, 300 watt inline heating going on that I'll attach but that's a different part of the video I suppose uh, for now I'm just gonna show you a real quick trick so let's move to the other area okay so real quick tip remember I was talking about uh, you know working on a budget and such uh, this tank has two already running filters, Sun Sun 704B canister filters, blah, 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 external canister filters. What I'm going to do simply is borrow one of these already cycled uh, canister filters. Probably this one, I believe, is the older one. So I'm going to take out either this one or the newer, whichever I choose, and simply swap it up for one of these brand new ones for this tank. So I'll leave one brand new one in here, which I'm not even gonna run yet, for what? There's nothing to clean, and exchanged another one of these new ones for one of these cycle ones from the uh, other habitat, from the piranha habitat. That way I will shorten the cycling uh, time, whatever, from weeks to days, where I could introduce the fish as soon as, you know, just two, three days after swap up and the water will be uh, alive and proper for, you know, living be beings to be, to be in there. So once again, uh, mo modularity goes a long way, like I said, when you're working on a budget. So think of it this way. If you're gonna spend the money, why not get the same? And then you have multiple parts that you can use in case one should crap out and the other one, I don't know, you drop or whatnot <laughs> happens. So instead of buying a whole new component, you could just use some of this, uh, you know, recycle of it or whatever. So here it is. Uh, another quick tip, quick, uh, you know, useful tip on filtration and setup.